Good evening. I'm Nancy Rosenthal, and I will be the moderator for the candidate forum. The timekeeper is Judy Jacobson. Thank you also to the candidates in the race for the New York State Assembly District 16. Information about voting and your races in your district are available on the league's voting website, vote411.org. I would like to remind the candidates, their campaigns and the audience that any unauthorized recording of this forum is prohibited to ensure that the content of the forum is not, is not manipulated in any way to create false or misleading impressions of any candidate. The complete forum will be posted on the Port Washington and the Nassau County League website and YouTube after the event. Both candidates and campaigns have agreed to this policy. Questions being asked tonight have been submitted by the public and reviewed by a league committee in advance to avoid redundancy. The candidates have agreed to the procedures and rules for tonight's forum. The format for tonight is as follows, opening statements of three minutes each, questions and answers limited to one and a half minutes each, and closing statements of two minutes each. Judy Jacobson, the timekeeper, will hold up signs when a candidate has 30 seconds and when they must stop speaking. Before going live tonight, uh, a coin was flipped to decide the order for the candidates to re respond. The order of answering questions will alternate between the two candidates. The order of closing statements will be the same as the order of opening statements. Let's begin with the first opening statement by Ms. Saliti. Thank you so much, and thank you to uh, the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Uh, you know, the pandemic has certainly made it tricky for candidates to speak with voters, so if I may say for all of us, thank you. Um, it's also uh, my first time meeting uh, my opponent, Regini. Hello, very nice to meet you. Um, so when I first decided to run for assembly when uh, Tony Durso announced his retirement back in February, I was excited uh, to be able to get to work and serve the people of this community that I call home. Um, then the pandemic hit and our world turned upside down. Um, you know, that excitement turned to uh, resolve. Um, I'm ready, I'm focused, uh, I'm ready to use my years of government experience to uh, get to work for the people of New York. Uh, there will be no uh, on the job training, as they say. Uh, I know how government works. I know how to deliver results for the people that I serve uh, because I've done it. Uh, when I worked for the Nassau County Legislature, our office was able to secure millions uh, for our school districts, for our first responders, uh, for the community. Um, constituent services was priority number one. Uh, I know the constituency groups. Uh, when I worked at the town of North Hempstead as the Deputy Commissioner of Community Services, I feel like I literally met everyone um, from all those summers at Fun Day Monday uh, to the forming the first ever Asian American festival uh, and beach feast. Uh, I got to know so many people in the community and some have become lifelong friends. Um, I eventually became uh, Deputy Chief of Staff at the Town of North Hempstead, uh, and that's when I really got to see um, the inner workings of government on every level. Um, I was the point person on um, projects big and small uh, for the supervisor. Um, I traveled to uh, DC and, uh, and Albany, ironically, full circle, um, and uh, you know, to uh, get funds and grants and things done for the people of the town. Um, you know, the next assemblywoman has big shoes to fill and a lot of work to do. Uh, how are we going to bring New York back uh, and rebuild after the COVID crisis and make her better than ever? Um, how do we sure schools get the funding that they need um, and remain some of the best schools in our country, uh, in our state, of course? Um, how can we bring a divided community together um, putting our differences aside and finally affect real change. Um, I know the people in government, uh, they know me, 
Uh, I know the community um, and I know we'll work together uh, to bring New York back. Uh, I will be a tireless and full-time legislator, transparent, accessible, working every day for you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Srivastava. Hi, hi, Nancy. Hi, uh, Gina. And um, I would like to thank League of Women Voters first for giving us this opportunity where we can share our thoughts and our vision with uh, the people of our constituency. Uh, I live in Manhasset Hills and I'm a small business owner. I would share just one thing when I was uh, in India in uh, kind of eighth grade and uh, my parents were planning the, the budget for the expense of their children's education. And uh, I was a little girl and my mom said that, what's your plan? Because like lower middle class people, they in India, they used to uh, plan their budget for the children's uh, you know, expense and education uh, expense. So I said, no worry, mom, I'll go to America. Nobody believed in me. But the point I want to make is that that little girl in that little small village in India with very limited resources, with very limited access to internet, knew that there is a place called United States of America where she can go and realize her unlimited dreams. So I'm so very grateful to this country and I think that this is the time to give back, not only to the community, but to the country that has given us so much. We have few concerns and I was working in the community for past many years and volunteering and organized different events, community events and all. Um, what, what I feel is there is a disconnect between what uh, the people of the constituency actually need and what uh, the elected officials are kind of doing in Albany. So I want to bridge that gap and uh, I want to be the voice of the community so that in Albany also, uh, they understand the actual concern of the people. I want to, uh, the, the latest, latest example of how out of touch our elected officials are is the new bail reform where the judges are kind of powerless to detain dangerous criminals. Dangerous criminals are walking, let loose free on the street committing another crime, another crime. And our crime rate is going up. So first and foremost, I want to uh, repeal the bail reform. And moreover to accompany that there is discovery reform. So of course, uh, I want to repeal the bail reform and because I'm a small business owner, I have seen the struggle, how, how businesses struggled during COVID. And after that also, so all there for the businesses that we love because they are the backbone of our economy. And third is I want to work always with the people to have lower taxes, to help the community, always there for the community. And I'm looking there, looking forward to serve the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can tell from that, uh, those opening statements, it's going to be a lively debate. Uh, <laughs> now we'll begin this section with questions and answers. Each candidate will have one and a half minutes to answer. Uh, Ms. Saletti, uh, you're first. Uh, what are the biggest challenges in the district with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic? How would you address them? Sure. Um, so, first of all, I, you know, I want to just start by saying that listening to the experts, listening to the public health officials, and you know, the Dr. Fauci's of the world, um, to make sure that New York is on the right track in opening up our business. I get it. I get it. It was hard. Um, we are, you know, seeing. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the end is near and, um, you know, we'll get back on track. Um, we had to take those necessary steps to save lives. And looking back, I'm sure all of us would do it all over again. Um, you know, the town was really great um, in partnership on all different levels of government um, and being creative to try to keep the businesses going throughout the pandemic. And one of the uh, things that I think that stood out the most to me was Port Outdoors. Um, it became a really great opportunity for not only the community to come together, but for businesses to open up, get people outside, not only 
restaurants, and it was a collaboration of all different levels of government. And it's those kind of creative, out of the box thinkings that I think will, you know, get New York moving again. Thank you, Ms. Srivastava. Yeah, thanks, Nancy. So, um, as I said earlier, also I'm a small business owner, and I have seen how businesses were struggling during the COVID. But I will not just talk about uh, the businesses. I have seen people struggling because of the situation, and it was such a such a you know hard time for everyone. So the challenge is not only at financial level. Look at their emotional, mental. We need to take care of all of those things. So of course I'm there. First of all, we need more funding. Definitely COVID relief money. I want to be allocated to the businesses so that they can, uh, you know, survive. A lot of businesses are closing down. We need to come up with business friendly policies to help them to survive. Second, people are losing jobs. So if we can attract more businesses to create more jobs, that is another thing. What another thing is, look at the mental stress, what people are dealing with. So of course we have to accept high time. Mental illness is also a problem and it's an issue, it's real. We have to uh, you know, come up with more plans how to help people to deal with the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sh uh, Srivastava, you get the next question. What yes. strengths and weaknesses did you identify in the New York State health system during the COVID-19 surge in the spring? What, if oh. any, changes are necessary? So New York, I mean, I would say there are so many unknowns. There are so many unknowns, so many unanswered questions. The biggest is how much cost it's going to be on the taxpayer's money. So I would you know, like to uh, know that in detail before going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Saletti. Sure, I mean, one of the things that pa the pandemic wa uh, revealed was that health insurance tied to jobs may not be the right answer. Um, you know, people were losing their employment and at the same time losing health insurance in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, you, know, a, you know, if we're talking about health care, I would love to see something happen at the federal level and maybe we'll see something next year. Um, we shouldn't be taking um, dollars away uh, from our health care system um, during a pandemic. We should be uh, increasing it. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, uh, what policies do you support to help New York recover from the economic devastation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure. Um, you know, first and foremost is uh, getting people back to work. Um, you know, that's how New York is going to rebuild. And one of the things that I think is, um, you know, infrastructure, including uh, renewables. Uh, you know, one of the things that was passed uh, recently was the, um, uh, the CLCPA, uh, which, um, you know, has some ambitious goals uh, for the environment and getting to our targets in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And that also includes increasing our renewable energy storage. And you know, putting people to work in renewables, in renewable energy, it's a win-win for everybody. Getting people back to work is what's gonna save New York. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, please. Thank you. So first, um, I think uh, more support for uh, businesses definitely because businesses, our local businesses are vital for our economy. They are backbone of our economy. And uh, you know, if we can give tax credits, more funding to the businesses first first of all to survive that will help in revenue generation second creating more jobs so last year we know that there was a you know a, there was a proposal of uh, amazon headquarters that if materialized that would have created approximately 25000 jobs with decent salary so we have to again come up with policies to attract more businesses support local vendors support local businesses and help people more funding definitely to come out of this situation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Srivastava. How would you close the looming New York State budget shortfall? Which programs or funding would you prioritize and which would you cut? So I don't, um, 
think that we can cut a lot. I have to definitely, I would like to see that this is, actually, actually, I would say again, this is high time. We need to run our government uh, with responsibility like a business. And with this huge deficit, and I know there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, like proposals of tax um, increase, which is definitely, uh, definitely not in favor of our taxpayers. And they're already dealing with so many other issues because of the COVID. So we have to, uh, you know, make sure that we, fo we are focused on more revenue generation because there is no way we can do any cut on essential services because we need it definitely for sure. So we, my approach would be to focus on more on revenue generation. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Saletti, please. Sure. Um, you know, first and foremost, the federal stimulus is critical. Um, it's, uh, we're going to need it. And it's not a blue state bailout. All 50 states are feeling the effects of the pandemic. Um, you know, we pay billion, billions of dollars more than we get back. And the federal stimulus, I'm, it has to come. It's critical. What's going to happen if we don't get that? Sure. Um, we do have to look at revenue generating me measures. I am uh, in favor of uh, taxing the super ultra wealthy among us, uh, Pierre de Terre tax. Uh, there's also some, you know, obscure bills that are out there that are very interesting to me. Uh, online sports betting will generate some revenue. But, you know, like uh, my opponent mentioned, it's the services or the funding, excuse me, that we send down to New York is critical. It funds our schools. It funds our health care. It funds our local government, which in turn funds our police. These are things that we can't lose. Um, and so we have to be creative and we have to work with our partners uh, to come up with ways to uh, move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Saletti, what streams of income would you consider to close the state budget deficit? Sure. As I mentioned before, um, you know, the billionaire, um, the tax on billionaires, I think that is, um, you know, we have to talk about paying our fair share. I think that's uh, one, one way to go about it. Um, we can't keep raising revenue on the backs of already overtaxed uh, Long Islanders. It's just, it gets to a critical point. Um, and so again, looking at creative measures uh, that will increase revenue um, on the, you know, most wealthy among us. Thank you, Ms. Srivastava. So I would say um, increasing taxes should be the last option because when you, once you start it, it trickles down kind of to the middle class and nobody wants that. So, you know, heavy tax burden is already on the taxpayers, uh, Long, Island, Long Islanders. And uh, so like, uh, you know, before also uh, we heard that this, uh, this uh, proposal is there, the, the sports gambling thing that will, of course, again, like I said earlier also, we have to focus on revenue generation. And uh, this is what I would go for. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, what are your views on climate change and how would you address the effects of flooding, erosion, and sea level rise? So Nancy, this is high time. So we have to accept that climate change is real and we all have to work hard with the community, with local people, with municipalities, local government. And we all have to step up together to take care of this. I, I do believe that we do need better water management system and uh, need more funding to take care of this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Saletti. Sure, um, you know, I've, I am proud to be endorsed by the New York League of Conservation Voters and, uh, and the Sierra Club. And one of the things that I you know, said in those interviews, and I always started out with, was I believe it, that climate change is real, and I will listen to the scientists and the experts. And as I mentioned before, uh, the um, climate, the CLCPA, the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, uh, sets ambitious goals uh, for uh, New York for the next 20, uh, 30, and 40 years. Uh, with that comes funding. And, you know, we keep talking about funding, we keep talking about funding, but that's 
how we're going to, um, you know, get our storm resiliency. We're a North Shore community. We're surrounded by water and we're so lucky to live in this beautiful community. Um, and that's honestly one of the biggest issues in this district is, uh, is the waterways and our bays is keeping them safe and, um, and clean and protecting us from the next storm surge. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, what do you see as the biggest threats to Long Island water? And what will you commit to do to build consensus in Albany mm -hmm. to reduce those threats? Sure. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I think that will, uh, that we find locally is, um, is in Manhasset actually in uh, their uh, septic system. And there was a study done recently, um, you know, it was pre-COVID and I think it kind of got drowned out by the pandemic, but my, um, our, Current Assemblyman, Assemblyman Tony Durso got a study for $220,000 uh, to look at the feasibility of that community for the uh, businesses on Plandom Road and the local uh, homes to change from uh, from septic to sewers. And uh, it's it's going to cost a lot, and that's where state government can come in. You know, give them some kind of tax incentive. Uh, giving more grants uh, to change over. Obviously, this has to be something that the community wants. In addition, for the environmental benefits to our groundwater, of course, um, you know, the, the cost factor is not something to be overlooked. And, um, you know, it's a concern. Our aquifers are sole source of drinking water. And, you know, that's where it comes from on Long Island and obviously have to do everything we can to protect it. Thank you. Ms. Srivastava? So Nancy, first I would say we need stricter legislative restriction, stricter laws. So there are, because we don't want contaminations in the water, like 1,4-dioxane or what are carcinogenic, so much of pesticides. So we have to have strict laws to avoid that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, unlike many states, the New York State Assembly has a pretty large salary. If elected, will you be a full-time legislator and not collect a salary, fees, or payment from other employment? Thanks, Nancy. Um, <clears throat> definitely. What I believe is this is public service, and whoever is coming for this forward they have to come with this commitment. You know, this is the reason I believe that uh, why uh, elected officials, they're kind of a little out of touch because if we come with full commitment and we are fully focused on one thing that we are doing, focusing on our community and focusing on our job that, uh, that you know, we, we have uh, committed to. So that will obviously uh, give better result and this is uh, what I will do. Thank you, Ms. Saletti. Thank you. Absolutely, and I, I agree with her. Um, this is a full-time position. Uh, that's what this seat deserves. That's what it calls for. And again, you know, as you mentioned, uh, it's, it creates conflicts of interest and, you know, focused on the job, focused on the constituent services, delivering results. There is no need to seek uh, outside income in this position. It will be a full-time job if I'm elected. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, uh, some residents were opposed to last year's state mandate requiring vaccinations for every child mm. attending school in New York State. Do you support the mandate? A uh, quick answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's we should, again, be listening to public health experts and scientists. Um, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, get bogged down in the noise and politicians. Uh, but at the end of the day, there was an outbreak. Um, and there was an outbreak because children weren't being vaccinated. Um, and we had to do it. Uh, we, they had to do it, um, you know, to keep our residents safe. And that's honestly what it's all about. So, yes, I'm supportive of the mandatory vaccinations. Thank you. Ms. Srivastava, please. Thanks, Nancy. Of course, uh, I would leave this to the healthcare professionals and scientists, but at the same time, we have to make sure that we are not uh, putting other people's life at risk. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, do you support the New York Health Act? Why or why not? <clears throat> Uh, again, uh, Nancy, uh, this is what I would say, the New York Health Act, um, I have to know because I um, understand the cost it's going to be the, it, on the taxpayers' money. That is the main concern. So, you know, we have to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Saletti, please. Sure. As I mentioned before, uh, the pandemic has showed us that our um, health insurance should not be tied to our jobs. I would love to see uh, some kind of universal health care come from the federal level, because honestly, that's where it should be coming from. In regards specifically to the New York Health Act, um, I've read it, um, and uh, it's a good first step. Um, it's short. Um, it's only about 25, 26 pages. Um, there wasn't it seemed like it was putting a lot of the onus on like the health department and the health commissioner without really giving too many specifics. I feel like if we're changing essentially the economy in the state of New York, there should be a few more specifics than 25 pages. But I do, under, I do uh, understand that it's being um, revised, it's being looked at. Um, the uh, co-sponsor or one of the sponsors is uh, you know, making some tweaks. And you know, if I'm elected, I would love to work with them, um, talk with them and give them my thoughts and uh, suggestions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, do you support the 2020 bail reform legislation? Sure, great question. Um, the way it was rolled out, in my opinion, was terrible. First of all, I don't think that legislation, um, at, especially this important or legislation at all, should be tied to the budget. It kind of um, held the hands of a lot of, a lot of our elected officials. Um, at the same time, though, our people shouldn't be in jail just because they're poor. And, you know, New York, it's, excuse me, Nassau County is, was recently, it was on the cover of Newsday, the safest county in America. You know, crime, there's not people, crime running all over the streets. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, scare tactics. And it's just, frank, quite frankly, not true. Um, could I think it, do I think it could have been done better? Yes. Um, and uh, do I support it? Generally, I th again, I think it could have been done better, but people shouldn't be in jail just because they're poor. There's two different um, uh, criminal justice systems in this country and people shouldn't be penalized um, because of the color of their skin or because how many dollars are in their wallet. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, please. Thank you, thank you. So absolutely, like I said earlier also that I will repeal the bail reform because, because uh, you know, safety of our neighborhood, safety and security is one of the biggest things that we need to take care of. We are family and we need to see that our families, our seniors, our children, they are in safe neighborhood. Our businesses can also flourish when the, when their the neighborhood is a neighborhood is safe. So definitely to to talk about the bail reform. This is this I I do understand it was it has been introduced with the right intentions, but it has gone too left. And uh, we have all the data crime rate going up like anything. And judges are kind of powerless. The the criminals are uh, let loose on the streets committing another crime. There was one person walking. Uh, with a young daughter and he was killed. Now to accompany that there is this, uh, you know, one part of bail reform, which is even worse is discovery reform. A person was killed because they had to disclose the identity of the person who testified against the criminals. So definitely uh, bail reform, I'll repeal. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, uh, how would you address crime in our district? What are your views around community policing and police funding. Thanks, Nancy. So uh, community policing, I support. That will help and we, uh, we, all have, we all should go for it. And uh, I do not support defunding of police. Making our law enforcement inefficient is not a solution. This is what I believe. And second, uh, you said uh, you know, earlier, the first part was that crime rate. Uh, I agree, Nassau, Suffolk, so far, 
we are in better shape. I will not say that, you know, looking at the, but how far are we from uh, city? The crime rate, 50% murder, you know, approximately murder rate going up, shootings going up. How, how long will it take if the same policies and, and, and the bills and laws we have? So we have to fix it right here so that it doesn't come here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Saletti. Sure. Uh, so um, our POP officers are probably one of the biggest assets that we have in our community. And uh, when I worked at the Nassau County Legislature, we worked hand in hand with our police. And when we held town halls, they were always there. People saw them and they knew them and uh, they knew that they can count on them. Uh, most people that I talk to, especially in our community, we live in a beautiful community, a safe community. Nobody wants to defund our police. Uh, you know, defunding our police comes with uh, less police. And our police are in our community and they are members of our family, in my family as well. And, uh, you know, once we start uh, taking those dollars away, um, you know, it starts taking officers away. And who are the first to go in any business or, you know, in your job? It's the new people. And who are the new people? Women, people of color. Uh, you know, the people that you want to see, people like you and me uh, on our police force. Um, I don't think, um, you know, I'm not sure how it got to this country where, you know, you can believe in, you know, racial, racial justice and racial equality and you're sometime somehow anti-police. Um, you can be both. You can believe that there should be racial equality and you can support our men and women in the police force. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, do you, do you support the recent gun reforms enacted in the past two years in New York State? Would you expand or repeal them? No, I support them 100%. Um, I, you know, including the recent uh, red flag law. I mean, these are common sense uh, gun legislation. You know, nobody's trying to take anyone's guns away. Um, it's, you know, that's a fallacy. We're just trying to keep our children safe. And, you know, any laws or legislation that would keep our communities and our family safe, I am 100% on board. Um, and just on a side personal note, um, I have, I've gotten the support of um, Linda Beagle Schulman, who, whose hero son, Scott, uh, was killed in Parkland. And, you know, we have talked and, uh, you know, I support her efforts, I applaud her efforts, and I would love, if elected, to keep moving forward uh, with more common sense on legislation, which quite frankly, I think most of our community is in favor of. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Uh, Nancy, I support our second amendment, um, but I do need uh, the, the, I think that we need to have strict laws with illegal guns. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, our public discourse has become highly partisan and often uncivil. What do you think is the most important for the residents of our district to do to make our public discourse more civil, more productive, and lead to a greater sense of shared community? Thank you, Nancy. I was, I was, uh, you know, all the time when I'm like meeting people, I'm getting this opportunity to meet a lot of people. I'm talking to them, and uh, you know, like never before, we are polarized so much, so much, and this is this is not good. You know, end of the day, we all have to uh, help each other and be there for each other. If one positive thing that COVID taught us is that be there, help each other be kind and compa you know, compassionate to other people in the community. So we have to definitely you know, uh, make bridges, not to burn it, whatever we can have different ideologies and policies, whatever, but we can come together, discuss it, and uh, you know, whatever, come up with a solution. But definitely we do need to come you know, support each other. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Saletti? 
Thank you. Uh, such an important topic. I mean, you know, I was thinking to myself what I was going to say. I'm like, get off social media. I mean, that, you know, the, the, the discourse on there um, has, has definitely contributed to it. Uh, also, you know, unfortunately, I hate to say it, a leadership at the top has also contributed to the vitriol and, you know, the discourse that we see uh, every single day. It's something, it's something different. Somebody else is uh, getting attacked for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's an important for our elect, next elected official, our next assembly person, uh, you know, to be that bridge to bring people together, um, you know, not to get on a soapbox, but I, you know, I've worked with people on both sides of the aisle. I've worked with different members of the community. And, um, you know, I hope that, you know, the years that we've known each other and, you know, the mutual respect, and that's, by the way, where it comes from. It comes from a place of mutual respect. You have to respect, even if you don't agree with it, somebody's differing opinion. And um, so bringing people together, um, both sides, uh, to affect, again, real change, um, open dialogue, um, you know, being honest with one another, that's the only way, um, you know, we're going to get out of it. Thank you, Ms. Saletti. Sure. Do you believe racism exists in our society and or our government? What role, if any, do you believe the state government can or should play in addressing racism? Um, sure. Wow. That's, um, you know, I think that, you know, for me personally, my um, views are shaped, and I, and I know it's the same with a lot of people uh, from your family. Um, I have a very diverse and blended family, um, you know, with my sister-in-law being, um, she's half Indian, she's half Black, and my nieces and nephews being Black. And it's just, it, it spans the spectrum. And, um, you know, when I hear what they're saying, and I, you know, I hear, uh, you know, the things that they're experiencing. Unfortunately, recently we had an issue in Great Neck where two young children were, um, you know, attacked, for lack of a better word, uh, for uh, not wearing their mask, but it was deeper than that. It was because they were Chinese. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of that in our uh, community, again, because of certain leadership from the top or lack thereof, um, the rhetoric isn't there. What can we do? How, can we legislate it? Can we legislate pe people being better uh, humans? Um, Asian American Festival. I point to that a lot when I'm speaking with people. It was an opportunity to bring an event to the town of North Hempstead to show people culture and food. And the more they have a better understanding of each other and their neighbors, you know, the more tolerant and beautiful world we have. Um, so those are the kinds of things that I would like to see. Thank you, uh, Ms. Srivasava. Thanks, Nancy. So hate of uh, any kind is not acceptable, definitely. But, uh, you know, personal experience, I'm a woman of color and I came to this country like 19, 20 years back and I have never experienced this, you know. So I don't think America is racist, but what we can do looking at the situation, we have to see that we don't fuel the hatred or that sentiment. Again, we have to build the bridges, try to put the communities together, people together. This is a beautiful word and people make it beautiful. So we have to understand that we all are same, we all are alike and we all have to work together. And definitely I will do whatever I can do to, because peace, peace and prosperity is the most, most important thing for the people. So I will do whatever it takes to bring peace to the community and so that everybody can enjoy their life uh, peacefully. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, do you think that Governor Cuomo's emergency powers are still needed? Should the New York State Assembly have a role in determining the opening or closing of New York businesses, schools, and houses of worship during, uh, due to COVID-19? If so, what should drive opening, phased opening, and closing of schools and businesses? Thanks, Nancy. So actually, the, the safely opening of economy is very, very important. Be, because like I said earlier also, because our businesses are vital, vital for the community, for the economy, they're the backbone of the economy. 
people are struggling we don't want to put everyone in a situation where they are not able to come out of it so we have to help them so definitely uh, if if there is a board they can come up with solution that okay we have to open the schools of course safety safety come first and we have to take all the precaution but definitely we should uh, go for opening our economy and schools and everything and uh, you know what you ask about uh, the governor uh, i mean i mean we were very uh, you know as the person of the community and uh, in the constituency uh, coming every day about all the you know uh, openly discussing and things with the with the people that was a good thing but the executive order regarding nursing homes was a disaster i mean uh, you know that uh, has taken like so many lives and we could have uh, definitely um, asked that uh, why this happened and why uh, that thing was not considered before issuing the executive order that it's going you know putting weaker people in that situation where they had to compromise with their life that was not good uh, thank you uh, miss saletti yeah, sure. Um, do I support phase reopening? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, what should be determining uh, whether, you know, the time frame that, we that we're reopening? The numbers, the data, the science. Uh, I think that from the beginning, um, you know, Governor Cuomo has done uh, a good job with uh, directing the COVID response in New York. We went from the worst, the epicenter of the world's uh, you know, COVID crisis to having one of the lowest rates in the country. Uh, you know, states are reopening, you know, and, you know, we're seeing infection rate at 50%, at 40%. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if that happened again in New York? Uh, so smart reopening, phase reopening, uh, getting to the point where, you know, the infection rate doesn't go high, the micro-targeting that the governor is doing in those like hot spots that we're seeing uh, in some parts of the city, that's smart, that's smart governing, um, looking at the data, listening to the science. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti, sure. uh, what, if anything, would you do to address segregated housing and public schools in our district? What, if any, should what, if any, role should the New York State Legislature play in mitigating segregation? So Newsday did that whole expose recently, which was really eye-opening um, The within the real estate market, how certain uh, realtors were steering certain people into certain neighborhoods. And I mean, you know, not for nothing, Long Island, uh, back to its roots in uh, Levittown, as America's first suburb, is one of the most, and I lived in the South for a little bit, segregated places in America. Um, what can we do about it? Legislation. And I know the uh, New York State Legislature has had uh, some hearings. Um, I believe Senator Gorin has some legislation to address this issue. And uh, I you know, look forward, hopefully, uh, in January to diving into this because it's important. We need to, you know, uh, be uh, together and blended and, uh, you know, part of the same communities and, you know, steering people in uh, certain communities is, is wrong, it's not right, and quite frankly, a little bit racist. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Strivastava, please. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, segregation of any kind, this is not good for the community. We all have to, again, we all have to learn how to live together, how to accept more acceptance for each other. And yes, we have to come up uh, with the more uh, supportive legislation, more laws so to, to take care of the issue. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Srivastava, what are the most urgent issues facing New York State Assembly District 16 and how would you address them? Thanks, Nancy. Two more, uh, most important issues. First, look at the huge deficit New York State has, like 14, uh, approximately $14.5 billion deficit. And uh, before COVID also, it was approximately $8 billion. So we have to see why this is happening. Because, because if, if, again, I said earlier also, because with such a huge deficit and tax, the burden will ultimately come to the taxpayers. So that is a big concern. 
And uh, we have to make sure that our essential services are not compromised and we have to focus on revenue generation, cutting our uh, runway, uh, runway expenses and we have to you know, come up with solution, definitely. Uh, second is the bail reform. I would again and again say that, that I will repeal bail reform because safety of our people is very important. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Saletti? Uh, sure. So one of the things that is, you know, that I've heard, you know, on the trail uh, is, you know, this district uh, is very concerned about uh, environmental issues. And I hear it a lot. And one of the things and I think I believe I mentioned it before, we were talking about, um, you know, Manhasset, septic to sewer. Uh, we're talking about storm resiliency. Uh, we're talking about, um, you know, how we deal with our garbage. I never knew that I would get so excited about learning about garbage than I have on the campaign trail um, and, you know, community composting. So environment, those are some, that is, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, we see uh, and people that have been talking to me about. And, you know, the other thing that folks have been talking to me about is, of course, education. Uh, you know, what kind, what's going to happen next year with the budget? Uh, are we going to be able to fund our schools uh, the way that they should be funded? And, you know, that is uh, one of the, you know, main issues that, you know, people have talked to me about. Obviously, you know, education taxes, uh, hand in hand. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Ms. Saletti, why should people alienated by the state of our politics mm -hmm. vote for you? So people who feel alienated by, you know, the system in general. Um, well, I, you know, I mentioned it before. I want to be, you know, transparent. I want to be accessible. I want people to know me. I want them to feel like they have a connection with me. I want them to feel like they are able to reach out to me and, you know, see me on the street and, and know who I am. Um, you know, they feel they need to not, politics and politicians shouldn't be, a bad word. And for a lot of people it is because they don't trust government and they don't trust their politics their politicians. Um, if they knew us, if they knew that we were straight with them, if they knew that we were, you know, this is a sophisticated electorate in the 16th Assembly District. It's very well educated. You know, you, you tell them to them straight, you tell them the truth, and uh, you listen to them. And, you know, if they feel like they're involved in the process, you know, I hope to have uh, town hall meetings and, uh, you know, bringing people together. If they feel like they're part of the process, you know, they'll, you know, they'll be more inclined to support you and trust you, um, you know, when you have to make those hard decisions. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sure. Fivistava. Thanks, Nancy. So, like I said earlier also, this is high time that government is drawn like a business with responsibility, with that sense of responsibility is so important. People are already dealing with, because of the COVID and the situation, and uh, stress and all, the least we can do is that they don't need to worry about their next meal. So we have to know how to manage our finances. And I'm a successful business entrepreneur, and I can definitely use my experiences to do that and take care of that issue. Prosperity of people is very important, not just because prosperity, it, it is the basic necessity uh, now. And um, you know, I'm coming with a commitment why commitment? Because I have already always been working in the community uh, for years. And, uh, and uh, again, like I said earlier also, sense of responsibility. So when you come with that sense of responsibility with a commitment, you know that you are a public servant. You're not a boss. And when you are going to make a decision that is going to affect the life of the people of the constituency, you go back to them and ask them that, hey, this is what we are going to, do, uh, going to do and what's your concern. Understand that so that you don't come up with some kind of the bail reform or all kind of whatever. So this is what I will focus on. I will go to my constituency. I'll be committed to the people of my uh, constituency. I'll be accessible and I will be able to take Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the first, the first stop sign. <laughs> right. Now we will ask for the candidates' closing statements of two minutes. 
since Ms. Saletti uh, did the first opening statement, she will also present the first closing statement. Thank you so much. This was great. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity from the league. Uh, it is so important that voters are able to make an informed decision this election. Uh, speaking of election, early voting starts this Saturday and I hope everyone takes advantage. This is a new and safe way of voting in New York. Uh, you know, we've seen the long lines uh, in other parts of the country and it said, in my opinion, amounts to voter suppression. Uh, you know, we should be doing all we can in New York to be making voting easier, uh, not harder. Uh, I look forward to using my experience in elections and passing even more election reform, like no excuse absentee voting, uh, automatic voter registration. And as I mentioned before, I am ready to get to work. Uh, I have the experience necessary. I know how government works and I know how to deliver results. Um, I am a Democrat. I believe in democratic values. I believe in fighting for what's right. And I will be a fighter for the people of Long Island, um, you know, and the 16th Assembly District tirelessly. Uh, you know, when I first decided to run, I had this whole plan. I was going to knock on every door. I was going to shake every hand. Um, I wanted to meet every resident. Um, I wanted to, you know, people to be able to go on the street, be like, oh, there's Gina. You know, I know her. She helped me out with this issue. You should call her. She'll help you out too. And, you know, that's the kind of elected official I want to be. I want people to know me, know my face, and hopefully eventually my whole face, not just, you know, this part of my face. And, um, you know, I want voters to know where I stand on the issues. I will hold town hall meetings, hopefully someday in person, um, on the important issues affecting our community. Uh, you know, and I would be honored, honored, if uh, you would cast your vote for me. Um, and by the way, if anybody is interested in continuing this conversation, if you didn't hear, um, you know, you wanted to learn more, you want to hear more about the issues, reach out to me, reach out to me tonight, tomorrow, whatever. Uh, my website, GinaForAssembly.com, and you can reach out to me directly there. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Strivastava. Thanks, Nancy. I definitely thank Le League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity. Um, I will just say that um, I came to the, this country with nothing but a dream and a desire to build a life for myself to be proud of. I always fought for myself. And when I, when I came, I didn't know anyone, but I started volunteering in the community and my community became kind of my extended family. So I would love to work for them, with them, whatever their concern is, I will always be there for them. And I want people to know uh, that it's very important to go out and vote and I need this support. And um, I thank all of you League of Women Voters and I thank Gina also, thank you. And God bless America. <laughs> Thank you candidates for your uh, considered answers and your closing remarks. Uh, two very fun candidates running uh, here for uh, New York State Assembly District. Um, uh, I'd love to have a party with these two <laughs> candidates. Uh, please make a plan for voting. Uh, as a reminder, you may vote via absentee ballot at any Nassau County early voting, voting poll site from Saturday, this Saturday, October 24th to Sunday, November 1st, or in person at your assigned polling location on election day, Tuesday, November 3rd. The league website, vote411.org, has pertinent voting information. Please check it out. And please vote, your vote does count. Thank you to the many league members who work so hard to make this virtual forum possible. A special thanks to Judy Esterquist, our technical guru, and Judy Jacobson, our league's esteemed voter service chair. Thank you for actively participating in your community and taking the time to educate yourself about these candidates. Thank you and stay safe and well. This forum is now ended. Good night.